Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, I want to talk to you guys a little bit today about fighting with heater shields, okay, or triangle shields. And they do come in different sizes, some of them big, some of them small, okay. Um, I fight with both of them. Um, you know, the, the first thing to understand with a uh, w w any shield is that it is a hard uh, parrying device, okay. Um, I, I have seen videos where people are kind of like flailing these things all over the place and it makes absolutely no sense to me um, and you know as somebody that fights competitively um, you know the shield you know basically you're using the shield to establish control to um, cut off uh, lines of attack um, so I want to know where my shield is um, and I want to have an idea of where it's where you know what area it's covering because with any shield right regardless of what type of shield I'm using um, you know, if, if I hold it, if I'm holding out in a position like this, right, okay, I know that, you know, if I'm at range, okay, my legs are pretty out of, you know, out of measure, um, and the, the easiest place that this person is going to try and attack is my head, okay, um, so, you know, if, if that's what I'm, if, if, if they're attacking my head, I'm either going to sword block it, or I'm going to bring the, bring the shield up, in which case I'm immediately going to attack low, uh, another possibility is for them, to attack the arm, especially on this side, um, you know, with, with a winker half that's going to come around. So that, that's that's an area will, that will sometimes be attacked. Um, you know, sometimes they will also try to attack this arm on this side. You know, which again I need to sword black. Um, so by me keeping my shield, you know, relatively stable um, in front of me and working around the shield, I I know what areas are defended. And I know, um, you know, what areas are covered, and I know the, you know, the likely areas that they're going to attack. Okay, um, and you know, so 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 that that, you know, you know, creating a somewhat predictable situation, um, kind of makes it a little easier for me to uh, to fight. Okay, so um, now I'm not saying that, you know, in your fighting you want to be predictable so that your opponent knows what you're doing, um, but you want to be predictable to yourself um, as far as as far as knowing where your where, where your defense is going to be at any given time um, now so uh, you know there's different ways to strap these shields this one over here um, you know has a handle okay um, this one over here has a strap uh, and a handle over here but again this is something that I can control, okay. You know, um, you know, I have a grip on this, and I can control, and I can attack. You know, and if somebody presses in on me, I can control the shield. Now, you can also use just just uh, uh, straps. Okay. Uh, this shield over here, okay, basically just has two straps. It has one strap over here and one strap over here. This is my my lefty shield, but the straps are tight, okay. Uh, and because they're tight, again, you know, I can control the shield. Okay, I know where my shield is going to be at any given time. Um, I know, you know, when I get on guard, okay, and I'm in the particular guard, I know what areas are covered. I know what my openings are. I know what the areas that they are most likely going to target. Okay, so, you know, if I'm fighting as a lefty, I know that they're going to probably target up here. So I either got to roll my corner up or sword block. You know, if I'm fighting a righty, I know they're going to attack around this side, uh, you know, probably with a winker house. So I know I either got to close this way or sword block this way. Um, so by the shield being, uh, you know, in, in a tight controlled position, I know, I, you know, I, I, I know where the shield is at any given time. And I know, um, you know, I know what, what I need to defend. Okay. And I know where my openings are. And I also know where my, you know, my lines of attack are. Because basically, you know, if I'm holding the shield flat like this, well, I know I can't attack through my shield, you know, with, 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 you know, like I can't attack here because I'll hit my arm. So I, I know I, I need to throw a winker how, or I need to throw a high shot, you know, like a high sword shot to that side or that side. So, so depending on where my shield is, um, I need, you know, I know what attacks I can make. Um, but, but the shield has to be controlled. It can't be, can't be flailing around. Okay, um, you know, when people typically. Um, move their shield around a lot, you know, I'm talking, you know, usually new fighters, 
uh, they tend to hit their own shield a lot, okay? Um, you know, and that's because, you know, they, they go through a shot and, you know, all of a sudden their shield is where their arm is. And, uh, um, you know, you see that a lot with new fighters. Um, so as far as learning how to fight, you want to basically learn to keep the shield in a position, right? Pick a position, any position, right? You know, some people might fight more closed like this, some people a little bit more open. But pick a position and work from that. You know, figure out what, you know, what you can do from that position, you know. Um, and how sort of the various different, um, you know, you know the various different strikes. Uh, know what your lines of attack are. You know, both going out and coming in. Okay, Let me put this down for a second. Okay, let's go back to this one. Okay, uh, this one's kind of interesting because, you know, it's it's kind of like somewhere in between a buckler uh, and a shield. Um, you know, it's really. Like as far as a buckler, it's a little too too large to, to comfortably carry because I, see my idea of a buckler is a buckler is something that you could carry at your belt, you know, through towns and cities, you know, comfortably. You know, you could have your, your, your sword here, you could have your buckler, you know, hanging off your belt. Um, you know, so so it's some it's something that you can conveniently move around. And you know, once you get to something like this, I cannot really conveniently carry this at my belt. Um, so I, I tend to think of this. Uh, more as a shield, uh, but it does have a lot of buckler uh, qualities. Okay, um, and uh, you know, other than the fact that you cannot comfortably carry this, you know, a shield this size, um, it, it has all the benefits of a buckler in the sense that you can use that corner defense, okay, and stick it out. Um, you know, it allows you a lot of uh, um, movement. So like basically, if there's a shot coming on this side, I can easily block their attack to that side. So, so you can do stuff like this that you cannot comfortably do with a uh, with a larger shield. Okay, so you got a lot of flexibility, uh, but at the same time, it does offer you a lot of defense. You know, and as I as I stick this out to you guys, you can see how how much of my body disappears as I hold it out to you. Okay, so then when you couple that with the sword defense, you know, um, you, you know you can get a lot of mileage out of a shield about this size. Uh, but you have to you have to control it. You know, this can't be something. Uh, that that's going to be um, that's going to be flailing around, and uh, you know one of the uh, you know when I fight people, one of the things that I try to do when I fight them is I try to get them to start moving their shield around and flailing. Okay, so so usually when I'll fight people, remember I'm attacking along the line, the open the, the line. So like with a shield like this, right? Uh, you know I, I'm attacking there, I'm attacking there, attacking there. You know, attacking there. So I'm, I'm attacking at the opening, okay? You know, I'm stepping to the side, attacking there. You know, I'm not attacking into the flat of the shield because that's not going to gain anything. I'm not throwing any shot where, where you know, if I throw a shot like this, basically what's going to happen is uh, this, the shield is going to cut off that angle so that the sword will be stopped before the tip can hit their head. So that's why I want all my, you know, all my shots going past the shield, okay? Um, so that's how I want to use it. So, so basically, when I'm fighting, okay, I want to intentionally get them to start moving their shield around. So for that reason, I'll throw a shot up there, step here, throw a shot there, come over there, throw a shot. You know, now I've got that shield starting to move back and forth. And the faster I can get them to start moving that shield back and forth, the better the chance that they will overblock. Okay. So, so you know that. You know, then I'll, I'll do that with some motion. Boom. You know, and you know. And then I'll double up on the same side. Because what happens when you start going back and forth, this side, that side, this side, that side, okay? What's happening is now they're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, what happens is they, they, the shield has weight. Um, as they overblock, you know, and as they try to block faster and faster, the weight of the shield starts to pull them a little bit more out of position. Uh, so what will happen is, uh, you know, in one of the passes, instead of going from there to there, what I'll do is I'll throw that shot, come back and just throw the same shot again. Okay, so, um, so my goal is to actually get that shield to start moving around. And even same thing with a buckler. You know, if it's a buckler, you know, you know, I'll, I'll start throwing at, you know, at the different quadrants to get that buckler to start moving around. Uh, you know, create a pattern. You know, and then you know, as I throw faster and faster shots at further extremes, you know, hopefully I'll get them to overblock up here maybe and then I can attack down here okay um, so you know 
we one of the main things with with fighting with shield is we don't want to over block okay we want to block as uh, we want to move the shield as little as possible to give us that block because you know if they're throwing a shot here if that's all I need to do that's great and that's all I want to do because now I can quickly get back here because once they throw a shot up here chances are that they're gonna probably come somewhere on this side uh, simply because it's most efficient to, to basically tick tock back and forth because from here I'm, re I'm already wound up to go to that side to go to that side to go to that side okay to go to that side to throw two shots to the same time you know, to the same time basically means I need to reload it okay because from here if I throw that shot I gotta bring the short all the way back and then you know reload it in order to hit the same side same thing as if I throw a shot here okay if I pull the, I gotta pull the sword all the way back in order to attack the same side. However, if I go from here, attacking the opposite side, and then the opposite side is a lot more efficient because I'm already wound up to go from one side to the other. Now, I did a separate video on this uh, where I covered a way to kind of cheat that. Um, and what I'll do is uh, I'll throw a shot like this, you know, come back, thrust, and now I'm, I'm essentially buying a fencing time. So I'm, I'm sort of wound up by, by thrusting forward, by making that cut, pulling back, thrusting, okay? Now my hand's in the position where um, it, it doesn't take as much effort to throw that, that, uh, that, that, uh, th that cut because the thrust halfway um, reset us. It didn't fully reset us, it halfway uh, reset us, so we kind of gain a half fencing time by using the thrust, okay? Um, but anyway, like I said, the, uh, the focus of this video is using these type of shields um, and with these type of shields you're basically blocking a lot with these corners you know I'm using these corners uh, to block because a lot of these shots are going to come up here you know especially at the leg I'm using that corner down there to to block the low leg okay and any leg shot is a potential fake because basically what I can do is I can throw here and then bring it up to the head so that's the low riser or I can throw high and then go low so any leg shot I ha you know, anything that appears to be a leg shot is potentially a head shot. So that's why I have to cover anything, everything. Okay? So, you know, I got to either block like this or block like this. I, don't, I generally don't like bringing the sword down because, you know, now you got to really reset it in order to take your strike. So I'd rather block low with the shield and block high with the sword because now I'm in a position to immediately, you know, block and then immediately um, counterattack. Okay, so that's why I like to go sword high, shield low. Uh, with the larger shield... Okay, main, you know, with this shield, I'm using that corner, that corner, that corner is going to catch any wicker house around the back. Um, so, so as, again, now as I'm matching up, basically I am looking to fight around my corners. I'm attacking the openings. Okay, you know, you know, throw a, throw a cut to that side. That's basically set up so I can then attack to that side. Okay, so as I'm doing this. Basically, the, the shield is, is pretty stationary. The, the larger the shield is, the less you want to move it because it takes energy to move this around. So with a shield like this, I want to keep it pretty close to my body, and my blocks are going to be pretty pretty minimal. Okay. Uh, with the smaller shield, because it's lighter and smaller, and I do need to cover uh, more area, Okay, now this is lighter. With something like this, I'm going to fight it a little further out. Now, out of range, I'll, you know, if I'm out of range, I'll usually bring it in. And then as I come into range, I'll, I'll bring it out. And then basically when I get out of range, you know, bring it in a little bit uh, to rest myself. So I don't just stand, hang out there with my arm all the way out there because that gets tiring. I'm looking for every opportunity to rest this. So I'm going to bring it in uh, to rest. And then as I come into measure, I'm holding the shield out um, so I mean so this shield is going to move a little bit more but at the same time I want to move it as little as possible um, you know and, and essentially fight around the shield so uh, those are my thoughts for fighting with a, uh, with a heater shield or a triangle shield as some people will uh, refer to it uh, I mean yeah I mean uh, the term heater is a modern day term so you could just as well call it a triangle shield, uh, you know, just the way, you know, we call round shields, round shields. Um, so yeah, that's fine. I'm perfectly okay with that. So if you guys like this video, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up, share it. If you're not a member of my channel, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.